So uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it is our great pleasure to have John, the creator of the class Mathematics for the Information Age here to share with us several stories behind this class. And also the audience here also welcome to ask him any questions about this class and also the textbook. So uh, let's welcome John. Yes. Okay, I, I guess I, I should tell you a little bit uh, about how this course got started and why it was created. Uh, it, it was over 10 years ago uh, uh, that we created it for the following reason. Uh, when, when computer science first started, uh, what was important was uh, discrete mathematics. But it turns out that as we reached the information age, the amount of data uh, was so large that we, we developed uh, that it was more important uh, uh, to learn about statistics and to learn about randomness or, or pseudo-randomness. Uh, just to give you an idea how the size of things changed, uh, when, when I was um, in elementary school, uh, a graph typically had only something like 10 vertices, and you could draw it on a piece of paper. And if you added an edge or deleted an edge, you probably reduced some important property. Uh, but when computers came along, uh, we started to consider graphs with, say, on the order of a thousand vertices. Uh, when social networks came along, uh, we started to think of graphs with millions of vertices. And in these graphs, it wasn't really, the specific edges weren't that important. And so we became interested in, in random graphs and, and properties of random graphs. Uh, and so sort of the nature of research changed from looking at individual items uh, to statistical analysis. And it turns out that today uh, we, we routinely deal with graphs with 10 to the 100 vertices. Uh, to give you an idea as to how large these graphs are, uh, the number of atoms in the physical uh, universe is only about 10 to the 70th. Uh, and so you might ask, <laughs> how, how can you store one of these graphs in a, in a computer? Uh, and, the, and the answer is, uh, you can't. But you don't need to store the entire graph to do something like a random walk on the graph. All you need to do is store the vertice you're at. If, if you have a computer program, that will tell you what the adjacent vertices are. Now, now, it turns out when you do a random walk on a graph, uh, if the graph has certain properties, uh, the, the walk will converge uh, to a stationary probability very quickly. Uh, and if the time to converge uh, was proportional to the size of the graph, it wouldn't be very helpful. Uh, but there is a concept of, uh, called an expander which uh, Professor uh, Yuxing will talk about. And if the graph has this property, uh, the time to converge is only the logarithm of the number of vertices. And so uh, the, these are important things that she'll cover. Uh, she'll also deal with high dimensional data. And it turns out uh, your, your intuition about uh, space was probably formed by your view of two and three dimensions. Uh, but it turns out that high dimensional space is fundamentally different. Um, if, for example, you take a sphere, a unit radius sphere in high dimensions, uh, as, as the dimension goes to infinity, the size of the sphere goes to zero. Uh, and uh, this has an important impact and uh, has to do with Gaussians. It turns out something you should know that if you take a number of samples of a random variable and average them, and you look at the distribution of the average, 
Um, if the distribution of the random variable, uh, if its variance is finite, uh, the average will uh, converge to Gaussian. And, and I think uh, uh, Yu Xing will prove uh, a simple version of what's called uh, the law of large numbers. Uh, and this, this tells you if, if you're going to sample data, how big a sample you have to take uh, to have a given accuracy with high probability. Another thing she'll, she'll tell you and prove is that an object in high dimensional uh, space has all of its volume near the surface. Okay. And so if, if you take this sphere in high dimensions, all of its volume is near the surface. But if you take an equator, all of the volume is also at the equator. Uh, and it doesn't matter where you draw the equator, all of the volume will be on all of these equators. And you might ask yourself, how could that possibly be? Uh, but Professor uh, Yuxing will uh, convince you of it. In fact, she, she will prove it. Uh, one, one of the things is if you pick a, a random vector and you call that the North Pole, and then you pick another random vector, the two vectors will be uh, perpendicular. And this will lead to something called the johnson lindenstrass lemma, uh, which says that if you have a distance in high dimension and you project it down to a lower dimensional space, it will shrink by a fixed amount uh, with, with high probability. And this means if you're going to run an algorithm in a million dimensional space, where all you're concerned about is the relative length of vectors, for example, in clustering, uh, you can project the data down to 100 dimensions and run the algorithm there uh, thousands of times faster. Uh, she will also talk about singular value decomposition. And once again, she'll talk about uh, large uh, matrices. Uh, oh, singular value decomposition is finding a uh, lower rank matrix to approximate a, a given matrix. And there's something called the first singular vector, uh, which turns out to be what Google uses uh, to rank web pages. And Google uses matrices uh, which correspond to the World Wide Web, uh, whose dimension is 10 to the ninth by 10 to the ninth. And this means it would have 10 to the 18 elements. And you ask, well, how can you store that in the computer? Well, it turns out that the matrix that represents the World Wide Web has a finite degree, very low degree. So it's a sparse matrix. Uh, but what you have to do to calculate the first singular vector is you've got to raise this uh, matrix to a power of 100 or something. And the question is, is how can you multiply these matrices? Well, she will give you a much way, better way of doing this, which you can compute this first singular vector in a matter of a second. Uh, she'll also talk about machine learning. Uh, and there, an important concept is called generalization. Uh, why, if you train a, a network uh, to recognize data from a sample, uh, why should it do well on other data that it's never seen? And she, she will uh, prove under what conditions this works, and, and then you'll un understand uh, one of the key things about learning theory. Uh, but also, it has to do with sampling data. Uh, if you have a big database, how much sampling, uh, how big a sample do you need to be able to answer questions with high accuracy? Um, She'll also probably talk about massive data. And here she'll introduce randomness. Uh, but we can't deal with pure randomness uh, because the definition of a random sequence is one with no short description. Uh, and if you could generate it, uh, the computer program would be a short description. So she will introduce you to pseudo randomness. And when you have a, what's called a random algorithm, the question is, is how much randomness do you need to have it work well? 
and there's going to be many other other topics uh, that that she'll cover. And, and the course may be one of the most interesting courses you'll take in, in your, your career. Uh, in fact, I get many emails from students who have graduated and they say, and this is from students both in China and in the United States. And they say this was the most important course in their career. So, so that brings us up to the, the notion of uh, who, who should take this course? Uh, clearly, if you're in computer science, uh, you really absolutely need it. But also, it's very important if you're in electrical engineering, mathematics, statistics, economics, or, or other areas. Uh, it turns out that uh, during my career, uh, computer science was concerned with making computers useful. Uh, but computers are useful today and computer science is starting to focus on the applications. And that's, that's why areas like economics and so forth, uh, this, this material is, is very important. Uh, the, other, the other question maybe on your mind is, um, what level of student uh, should, should take this course? Uh, I'm going to leave that up a little bit to uh, Professor Yusheng. Um, I've taught the course to actually to sophomores and, and they've done very well. But we, we can talk a little bit about that and uh, you know, we can answer any questions you might have. And one, one of the things um, to get the book for the course, uh, 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 Professor uh, Yusheng will uh, give you a website you can download it from. Uh, but uh, you, another place to download it from is if you go to my website and under my picture uh, is the word Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge is the company that published the book. And if you click on Cambridge, you, you can download the PDF form. Uh, if you want a hard copy, <laughs> you're, you're gonna have to get somebody to print it for you because it's 400 pages. But if you just want uh, uh, a digital copy, uh, you can just download it to your, your computer and you'll always have it. Uh, with, with that, should we kind of just open it to any questions or discussions that uh, pers prospective students might like to ask? Uh, yes, sure. I think uh, the audience can ask questions now. Okay. Um, I think they may be, uh, you can also type your question in the chat. And if you're uncomfortable to speak it, Will, will you teach, you'll teach the course in English? Yeah. 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 I should say one thing to students. Uh, one of the differences between the course in, in the United States and a course in China is in the United States, students always ask questions. Mm -hmm. uh, when I uh, say some material which isn't quite clear, someone will always ask. And it helps all of the students in, in the uh, room to understand it better. So I, I hope people will, uh, uh, in, in Asia, will ask a lot of, you a lot of questions. So actually, what's the size of the class when you uh, teach in US? Uh, it's typically a little over 100. 100, okay, I see. Or even if it's 100, like there's still several students ask you questions. Oh yes, um, because they want to learn the material. I see. <laughs> uh, in fact, there, there was one young woman who would ask me two or three questions every lecture. Really? <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you a little about her because uh, <laughs> when the course was over, she said she, was gonna, she would graduate it this year and uh -huh. she was gonna take a three year break before she applied for a PhD program. Three years, okay. Yeah, I wondered about that too. Uh, but she asked me if I would write a letter of recommendation now because mm -hmm. I might not remember her three years <laughs> later. So I, I asked her what she was going to do on her break. Mm -hmm. And it turns out uh, she's very good at archery. And, okay. and she thinks she can make the U.S. Olympic team uh, in 2014. And mm -hmm. so she the next three years she's going to spend uh, practicing archery to see oh. if she can 
win a gold medal in the Olympics. Oh. <laughs> and then, then she'll go on to graduate school. Okay, so, so she's a student in Cornell? At Cornell, yes. I see. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, she was not a, uh, I don't think she was computer science. So um, that's why she was taking the, the course later. I see. I, uh, I think she was majoring in math. I see we have some questions. Yeah, we have some questions. What kind of knowledge should we learn before we take this course? Like, okay. It would be good to know a little bit of linear algebra, and it would be good to know a little bit about probability, uh, to know something like uh, the expected value of a sum of variables is equal to the sum of the expected value. Uh, although I, I, I assume that you're going to review yeah, yeah. some of I the will. stuff that people should know. Yeah. Um, and, it's probably important that you like to understand intellectual things because a lot of the course is understanding intellectually what's happening rather than specific theorems and so on. Yeah. Oh, and clearly they would know calculus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think uh, you basically you need to know how to integrate functions. That's one right. thing. And also for the, the the probability theory, so in some sense you need to know like uh, when x and y are independent, uh, e x y equals e x times e y, some uh, like the level like that. Right. Yeah. And for the linear algebra, you may need to know the definition of rank, and I I will also review it in the class. Right. Yeah. yeah I always review that material. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's helpful if students have seen it before. Yeah. And then the review reminds them about it and, <laughs> and yeah. helps. So another uh, how much mathematics? I think it's the uh, uh, same question. Like, should we master before this course in detail? Right. Um, if, if you enjoy mathematics, uh, you can learn this material very quickly. Okay. Oh, you you sat in when I lectured in this course a year ago. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so that should give you a feeling for how much math they're going to need. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the lecture is online or offline? Oh, it's actually both. It's actually offline but we're gonna record it. And in case like, you know, any uh, <laughs> unexpected thing happens, we can change back to online. Right. Mm. Without just call them a uh, uh, post-graduated student in X. I see, so you already graduated and you still want to, I see. That part I really don't know. <laughs> So this this is a student who's already graduated, is yeah. that right? Now, yeah, it's, it's still, I think this material is so important. Uh, if you're going to have a career having to do with information, mm -hmm. uh, it would be worthwhile to sit in on the course. Okay. I see. Yeah, but <clears throat> I think he or she asked about how to uh, register this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's another uh, problem. Yeah, I actually really don't know. I don't know whether they're going to release. John, do you, know, do you have any like uh, online? So like when you are taught this class before, is there any online resource? I mean, the, I the video. Any online version that I'm aware of. I see. Uh, some, some universities in China, though, uh, do record lectures. I see. I think so I, I searched online. I didn't find anything. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so another student asks, what do you mean by intellectual things rather than theorem? Um, well, just to, sort of to understand, if, if you're talking about a, a random algorithm, uh, it turns out that the algorithm is not really random. What you do is you pick uh, some parameters randomly. Uh, maybe you pick a hash function, which you plug in 
to the algorithm. But once you've done that, the algorithm is completely deterministic. So what do we mean by a random algorithm? Well, when you want to know something like the expected time, it's, uh, it's averaged over all choices of the parameters you could stick in. And there's just many, many concepts like this uh, that are important to know. Uh, and, you know, particularly if you're going to be in learning theory, uh, and now deep learning is an important area, uh, you, you may want to know, well, how do you train a network with millions of gates? And, and most, many of the things that come up in one place, uh, the mathematics is the same uh, when it comes up in another place. I, I guess the one area I mentioned is in learning theory, where you're training an algorithm maybe to recognize images, uh, the mathematics that tells you whether that's going to work is the same as if you had a big a data set say I had the age and uh, salary of everybody in China, and I wanted to store it on my iPhone, uh, but I didn't want to store the whole data set. I, I wanted to just store a sample. How big a sample should I pick? Uh, and, and it turns out the concept of overfitting comes up here. Uh, in learning theory, it has to do uh, with how many hypotheses you're going to pick one from. Uh, whereas in the sampling, it de depends on what is the range of questions you're going to ask. Uh, and if you're going to ask too big a range of questions, it's, it's not going to work. Uh, so it's, it's just explaining that some of the mathematics uh, is what underlies various things we do and it comes up over and over. Uh, like we talked about the union bound. Uh, that comes up in many, many applications. And so to understand what the union bound is and why it's important uh, is, is more important than understanding exactly what some of the parameters have to be for a given algorithm. Okay. Oh, I see. So, uh, yeah, I think the uh, the teaching assistant can tell um, him or her. Like, uh, I see. Okay. Um, so actually, I'm wondering. I have a question. Is like, um, one thing is, do you think the the students from um, mathematics department do they need to take this class? Uh, I think it's important for them. Um, so I'll, I'll give you my view of mathematics. Uh, if, if you want to have a career in pure mathematics, uh, you're going to be working on problems which are hundreds of years old and have had enormous number of very bright people who have worked on them and haven't solved them. Uh, if that's what you want to do in your career, that's great. Uh, but I think most people in mathematics, if you want to have a successful career, are going to deal more with applied mathematics. Uh, you're going to look at some application where new mathematical issues come up that haven't been, where people haven't been trying to solve them for hundreds of years, and you'll have a much better chance. And if that's what you're going to do as a mathematician, then uh, this course is probably critical for you. Uh, because the problems you're going to work on are going to have something to do uh, with uh, probability statistics and, and doing things in, in large data. So, okay, so I think we have to ask, will it be difficult for freshmen to join this course? So actually, can you uh, talk about yourself more to us? Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want uh, him or her to like tell us like what kind of, for the freshmen, like I actually don't know what the students like these days learn in their high school. I think freshman means they just graduated from high school, but I actually don't know what, what they learn in high school these days. What, what I would suggest if someone is wondering whether the course is going to be too hard for them, mm -hmm. uh, 
why don't they sit in on one or two lectures? And if yes. they can understand it and handle it, uh, then they'll be okay, probably. Uh, but if they're having trouble with your early lectures, uh, then I would encourage them not to take the course because it'll get gradually, it'll get a little bit harder and harder uh, through the semester. Mm -hmm. uh, are in, in China, can you register f for a course after a couple of lectures? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See, in, in, in the U.S., where I'm more familiar, uh, students sign up for more courses than they're going to take. Yeah, and then uh, they out, yeah. we have good instructors and so on, and drop the others. <laughs> <laughs> I think they actually uh, do the same thing in China. Let me check the what is the location of this class. Okay, I find it. So I'll tell everyone here. This is the location. <laughs> it's, it's in Chinese. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. Another, I think you can also, like John said, you can uh, go to his website and download this book and then you start to read it and to see whether uh, you have like, and then you like go to my class and also try one or two lectures. Yeah, some, some of the book though is harder to read than you're going to teach. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because we had to put proofs in on some things. Mm. And you probably aren't going to spend the time on the proofs. You, you're just going to give them, this is how the proof goes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I, yeah, one thing I also am curious is like, what's a, do you know what's a favorite chapter the students? Like? Oh, um, the, I, I think it's chapter two, number two. It's the one on uh, high dimensional data. High dimension. Oh, that's their favorite. That, that's the one the students really love. I see. Because it's very counterintuitive. That's the reason. Right. Right. <laughs> right. And one, one thing uh, I'll mention to you, um, one of the things that confuses students uh, is when I draw pictures on the board, mm -hmm. I'm drawing them in two dimensions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm drawing a high dimensional object in two dimensions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's what misleads them. They yeah. have to start thinking, wait a minute, uh, what, what is that in 100 dimensions? Yeah, actually, I think the one thing I, when I listened to your class last year, one thing confused me a lot at that time is, uh, uh, is a square, is a cube, if the um, vertex, the coordinate of the vertex is half half. In two dimensions, that cube is within the uniball. But yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you know, one, is one of the good exercises to give mm -hmm. is the exercise on a d-dimensional cube. Mm -hmm. and it asks how many vertices, edges, faces, and so forth. Oh, I and see. That will help them understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also an exercise on a cylinder in high dimensions. Mm. Uh, once they understand that, they'll be much better off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, do you have any other questions? I think I think the students they mostly worry about like what kind of like uh, how many maths they need to learn to take this class. Yeah, it's it's little things. Uh, I mean, something else they might need to know is what is the difference between an open set and a closed set. Mm. Uh, but when you explain it, it's it's not that they have to take a course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that you're going to explain many of these concepts. And if they're good at picking up, when, when you explain a concept to them, if they grasp it, mm -hmm. they'll be okay. Uh, but if they don't, then this is probably not the right course for them. Yeah. And even for the singular value decomposition, I think your book, write it as like, you're gonna, uh, the, the, the material actually give the students a very intuitive way to understand, is actually a geometric way to understand the whole thing. Yeah, right. you, may, you may actually don't need that many linear algebra background to, to understand. No. Yeah. no, but you do need to know what a matrix is. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what a matrix is. And, and you do need to know if you multiply it times a vector, 
Mm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, um, and as you mentioned, rank. Mm. They're just some it's a little bit, but I would assume that in high school you would probably learn about a matrix and solving linear equations. I actually don't, but I oh. I don't know whether they they learned it. Well, uh, they, they need to know uh, that if you have more equations, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> number of well, variables, I see. or, or are, less equations, I see. Uh, they, they, they need to know when there is a solution, when there is right. not a solution. Okay, I, but I, I don't think I learned it in my high school. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, do we have any other question? Okay. Actually, um, I I want to ask like, um, what's the special thing for this class? Why this class is different from some like other uh, class? Oh, why why is this separate from others? You're saying? Yeah 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 yeah. Um, many of the courses. Uh, have to do with applications. Uh, they're either talking about network security uh, or, or they're uh, dealing with uh, deep learning or something like that. And uh, what this course has done is it's abstracted the mathematics that occurs in all of these other courses and puts it in one place. Mm -hmm. And if the student has this mathematics, when they then take a course which uses it, uh, they'll be much better off. Yeah. I think for me, when I read the book, the, the like, biggest difference between this book and the books I learned in my undergraduate is like this book rarely focuses on intuition. Right. And and for some other math class I took before, it just gives you a theorem, a lemma, a proposition, and a proof. But like this book is quite different. It gonna tell you the intuition, the high level thing behind the proof. Right. And even and though like- Why yeah. you would like the theorem. Yeah, why you like the theorem, why this is useful, like what's the right. motivation behind it. I think that's a, that's the thing I actually like about this. That's why I want to become an instructor of this class. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think the students maybe, okay. Okay, we, we have more questions. <laughs> How much homework we have to do every week in what form? <laughs> uh, I gave, uh, Every, every week, I gave about five problems. Okay. I think I may do the same. So, I, you mean every week, you mean in Cornell or your last time? In, in Cornell, but I think roughly the same. So, how, how many class you, 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 you give every week? Oh, uh, we, we uh, the course was just, the lectures were one hour. Oh, and now? Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So there were three of them. Oh, three of them. I see. So I for here, uh, uh, we're gonna have like two hours right. every week, but right. not like Monday, Thursday. It's only Thursday. <laughs> so that's actually convenient. Okay, I think. Okay. And in what form? Uh, we strongly encourage you to use late hacks, and I think the teaching assistant gonna assist you. For that, if you're not familiar with slate hacks, I don't know whether you <laughs> do. You, do you uh, require students to use slate hacks before? Uh, I, I tell them to use whatever code they have for writing. Okay. Uh, uh, and in in LaTeX, um, uh, there's another piece of code called Tixi Picture. Tixi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, because you like to be able to put pictures into your homework. Mm -hmm. uh, and the nice thing about Tixi picture uh, is if you put text in your pictures, uh, it'll be in the same uh, font <laughs> as, yeah, the, yeah. as the rest of the, your thing. Yeah, that's true. So you, you use that to write, uh, to, to draw every picture in the textbook? 
Yes. I see. <laughs> yes. Uh, do we need to have uh, many knowledge about statistics for this class? Uh, I'm, I assume that the course involves a lot about statistics. Oh, you don't need to know much about statistics, other than that it's important. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think like the three examples we mentioned, one is like the expected of uh, the sum equals the sum of the expected, that right. one, and right. uh, the statistic independence, that one, and uh, uh, the the law of large number we're gonna uh, talk about in the class, like right. yeah. Um. Okay, so one student uh, is a mathematics here more inclined to application instead of proof process? Yeah, it's, it's what comes up in various applications. Uh, for, for example, uh, if, if you created a graph where the vertices are people and there are edges between people if they know one another or if they're in close contact, uh, and you want to know what would happen if somebody on this graph got the virus? How, how would it spread? Uh, how many people would get it? Uh, it, it? It's to answer questions like that. Uh, and you might wonder um, when, when these plots that show the, these curves <laughs> that and come down, uh, you might wonder why it's, it's a relatively small number of people who get the virus. Uh, because if it's growing exponentially, you would expect half of the people to get it before it start, the curve starts coming back down. Uh, and the reason is, is if you look at distance from a given person going out, uh, the number of people that, that you encounter grows quadratically rather than exponentially. Uh, and it's, it's kind of understanding things like this so that you can uh, determine what would happen if you change some parameters uh, or um, if you wanted to know how, how many people uh, had to be immune before it was safe in the country and things like that. Uh, the, the, the mathematics in this book is what you need to answer these questions. Yeah, when I read the book, I think the topics are actually, uh, they all have very good motivation, like related by uh, important applications. But I think it also provides very elegant proof. Like, like tools, like my favorite is uh, the, the Johnson, the JL lemma. And yeah. Uh, yeah, the one thing you mentioned before, the giant components in, in random yeah. graph session. Yeah. Yeah, why, why should every graph have a giant component? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So I'll give the students five seconds to ask questions. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Okay. So I, I think. <laughs> oh, did something just come? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that because the platinum has a 2D surface? Oh. Um, what's it? Uh, what's the classroom for? Well, maybe that has to do with the virus. Why, why is the number of people only grow quadratically? Uh, if, if that's uh -oh. the question, uh, the answer is, is because the virus goes from one person to another uh, if you're close by. Uh, whereas other things you do with people when you're talking about ideas, uh, it may transfer from one person to another person who's in, from the U.S. to China or something, but but the virus uh, goes by physical distance. So yes, it's because the surface is is two dimensional. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, I think we don't have any new questions. Okay. Then I will wish you all a good day. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, thank, let's thank uh, John. Thank you very much to give us this uh, great uh, introduction talk and also uh, adver advertisement for my class. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. have, have a good day. Yeah, you too. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye-bye. So, everyone.